Okay, I need to give you guys the extreme value theorem. Which is kind of the Calc 3 version, or I should give you the Calc 3 version rather of the extreme value theorem, which is a thing you should know from Calc 1. You're not supposed to put any values. So, do you guys know the extreme value theorem from Calc 1? I remember learning it. Yeah. I have been given the opportunity to learn that yeah. <laughs> and failed to capitalize upon it. Uh, I think you guys actually probably do know this, but yeah. let me put but it over here. You show it, we're going to know, but it's like, I can't throw okay. it Okay, so here's the extreme value theorem from Calc 1. If a function f of x is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then f of x has a max and min value on the closed interval from A to B. It's one of those theorems that seems super obvious. Yeah, this is one of those theorems that should seem really obvious, right? Like, if you have here, from A to B, and you have some kind of a function that does something like this, right? Yeah, like, it's not a line or a plane, it's just some friggin' continuous function. Somewhere there's a high spot, somewhere there's a yeah. low spot. Yeah, some place in there, there's going to be a highest spot, some place in there, there's going to be a lowest spot. It sort of reminds me of the one where it's like... What about a line? What about a horizontal line? Yeah, so what about a horizontal line? Good question. Here's your horizontal line. There's A, there's B. Your max and min are both the same spot. Yeah, your max and your min are the same value, and they are whatever the height of the horizontal line is. Okay. X value, not you guys see that? Position on F and X. It's not a point on the graph. It's really about the maximum y value that this function attains, right? Yeah. You guys see that? That's the value part, right? This is an output thing. This is saying there is a biggest output, not there's not there's a bit a highest point on the graph. That's not necessarily true, right? There could certainly be lots of them, right? All these points have the same height. But there is a biggest height attained and a smallest height attained. Yep. You guys cool that? Okay, so let's amp this thing up. Which tool did I use? Wait. Make make this plus plus a dimension. What do you do? As a function of f x y. Okay. So let me do this. If f is a continuous function. Okay, so I have left off the of x and y on purpose because this is not necessarily a function just of two variables. This theorem still holds if you have schmack loads of variables. So if you have f is a continuous function of some variables, on a, what did I call this interval? Close. And so what's also special about that? Yeah, so maybe my easiest thought here would be to think of something like, well, it's like a, B by C, D, right? You guys see that? Like that would be an interval that goes from A, B, and the X, and C, D, and the Y, and is kind of a, like a filled-in rectangle. Okay. You guys see that? Area. Okay. Um, but I need a word here. See, we already have continuous. 
So this is going to describe that set. Mm, maybe I need a calc one example. So why was it important that this thing had two finite ends? That way it can you can only go left and right, but in this case you can go multiple ways. So. Yeah, so my issue is right, like it doesn't make any sense to just say it has like a left and a right end, because I could like maybe go up forever or something. You guys see that? And why am I trying to protect this from running off to infinity? It's because of that you have a maximum and a minimum. Yeah, because I want to have a maximum and a minimum, right? Doesn't if I had like infinity. 1 over x, right? Yeah, on the one closed one. interval from like 1 to infinity. Oh, so you need a closed and not infinite? Yeah, like my, my issue is the thing I'm watching out for is like 1 over x on the closed interval from 1 to infinity, right? Like, if I had to draw a picture of this, it looks like this. Yeah, technically, it never reaches 0, so it doesn't have the minimum. Yeah, it doesn't have a minimum value. It's got a maximum value, but it doesn't have a minimum value. Correct. So I need to keep this thing from running off to infinity. So. I'm going to put a word in here that means, and it doesn't run off to infinity. Oh, bound it. Okay. So I'm saying that this inner, this set has to be closed and bounded. You guys see that? So I've got a continuous function on a closed and bounded set. Then f has a max and a min value all on that set, right? Is this for every is this assumed to be for every variable of that or oh it's an output, never mind. Yeah, you guys see that? This is an output thing, right? This is just a there is a highest spot, whatever highest means, right? Because really, like, if I have a function of x, y, and z, right, I might be saying the temperature function in this room, right, is probably continuous. This room is a closed and bounded space, right? So there is a hottest point and a coldest point in this room. You guys buy into that? Where's the hottest point in this room? Probably around us, inside our bodies. Yeah, definitely inside of one of you. <laughs> okay, where's the coldest point in this room? <laughs> yeah, probably right underneath one of the vents if the AC is running, or in Ryder's heart, or <laughs> possibly near the bottom of the door or against one of the windows, right? Is it possible that there's more than one point that has that coldest temperature? Yeah, like the windows could all be the same temperature. Not exactly the same. Room's empty and yeah, AC's oxygen. Yeah. yeah, probably they're not exactly the same, but they could certainly be similar and yeah. within my measurement error. You guys see that? Yeah, we know there's a minimum. There, it's, there's not going to be some point that's negative 50 degrees in the room. Just random. So. Yeah, you guys with me on that? Stop casting magic. Okay, so that's the idea here. Be careful with this thing a little bit. You have to ensure that you have both a continuous function and a closed and bounded set. So if I walk outside, right, and I say, what's the warmest point? Yeah. Are we, are we still with the What's the warmest here? point where? Yeah. You guys see that? Like, where does this thing end? Well, if I say, what's the, what's the warmest point in the universe? Yeah. I have no idea if the universe is closed and bounded. Yeah. Right? I just, I actually don't know. I, I think scientists don't know. <laughs> Physics is confusing, and so I have this thing about, I'm not sure. Uh, it's closely expanding. Be so. careful even with things like, what's the coldest point in the atmosphere? Because the atmosphere is not really closed, right? It doesn't have like hard edges on it. There's not like a, this is the end. It just kind of diffuses into space. Yeah. You guys see that? So like. What's the coldest point in the atmosphere? I don't know. It's not closed. It's bounded, right? Like I know the atmosphere is within the solar system, for instance. Yeah. So like I could put a big ball around it, but I don't know that it's closed. It doesn't have that hard edge. 
to get to the moon, you know you're probably out of it. <laughs> totally. I believe that the moon is probably out of the atmosphere. Let's find out. <laughs> but only probably. I don't know. I don't know that much. About that. You guys cool with this? Good with this object? Okay. It should be noted that this thing gets harder when you start doing Calc 3. Let me remind you how you map, how you like procedurally go about finding these values. You guys remember? Like if you want to find one, what do you do? In Calc 1. Yeah, and that's a good idea, right? You should like calculate f prime. Set it equal to zero. Get yourself some critical points. Keep in mind, right, in the critical points you should also look for... Yeah, you should also look for spots where the first derivative is undefined, right? So you get your mass at critical points, and then you what? Check the size. Okay, so you need to check the critical points. And so concavity won't necessarily do you, right? You're like looking for sign change between increasing and decreasing. Concavity is a convenient tool, but it's not the be all end all, right? You might have to do something a little more creative. So you check them all, you find out that some of them are maxes and mins, but what else do you need to check? Like so far I've found on my picture here, I found this guy, right? Because there's a flat spot there, and then I check the concavity, I find out it's concave up, so I get my minimum there. But... Yeah, so I, I could find the value there, that would be a good start. What else do I need to check? Yeah, I need to check the ends, right? And actually, we can do a little bit better than checking all the critical points, right? You guys see why I might not care about all of them? Like, what if it does this out here? No. Yeah. Like, there might be a billion critical points, right? Or infinitely many critical points. But if I'm checking about the, I'm looking on the interval AB, right? So I'd probably pitch any that aren't in there, because checking them is sort of a waste of time. You guys see that? So I need to check them and then check the ends and then compare the values. OK, now my claim is that when you do this in Calc 3 land, the procedure is basically the same. Yeah. It's just. You need to take a derivative. Or the partial of f. Which is going to be a, what's the total derivative here? Yeah, you're going to take the gradient, right? You're going to set it equal to zero. You're going to look for the critical points, right? That's going to get you some of them. You're going to have to go check for discontinuities for the others. So you get some whole mess of critical points. You need to check the ones that are in the thing you care about. You also need to check the... Ooh, shit. Oh, yeah, uh, the end points and all of them. The it's and point. stopped making sense. Right? It's so like in the easiest case where it's a rectangle. There's still yeah, as many points. Yeah, as you need to check the these. edges, not the ends. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to do that because it's hard and hell to figure out the first time by yourself. Oh, okay? so you can't treat it as a two dimensional object? or Kind of. So, what you're going to want to do is slim the edges down as best you can into a calc 1 problem and then do the calc 1 problem on the on the edge. I'll show you how to, yeah, you're going to you're going to take cross sections, right? And then the cross section will be a function of one variable, and so you can do the usual calc 1 thing to figure it out. And then compare the values at the end and circle the biggest one and the smallest one. Cool? All right.